What's up ladies and gentlemen, this is Tony Mo from Pixabyte, and today we are taking a look at The Swapper, a puzzle platformer developed by Facepalm Games. The game just released and is available on Steam for $14.99, and for the first week it's also going to be 25% off to kind of celebrate its release. You know, that's something Steam does very often, it's nice to see that this game is going to be discounted because you guys are really going to want to be checking this game out. Now, we're starting off right here, as you can see we're sort of playing as an astronaut basically. There's not a lot of story revealed about the game right off the bat. Initially, you pretty much have crash-landed your shuttle on this landing place, which looks like at, at one point there were other people here like you who were exploring it. And uh, you start off with just about nothing, but uh, right now I've actually just picked up the first bit of a tool that you pick up in, the, in this game. There's essentially two pieces of equipment that you will gain. The first one is this cloning weapon. So if I click right mouse button, right mouse button here, I can create up to four clones, which will then spawn and they will walk in the same direction that I'm walking backwards, forwards, jump, all that good stuff. They will mimic what I'm doing and then I can recollect them and I can also simply just kill them off which is kind of a uh, weird thing to think about. Now one thing you may be noticing is you're probably going to be like, what is, how is this game, you know, how is it animated? What are these visual styling? And the entire game is actually made out of clay. It's made out of clay and other various everyday items so that's just awesome. I mean I think this looks insane. I was a big fan of I'm a big fan of stop motion, things like Wallace and Gromit, and the fact that this whole entire game is made out of clay and like everyday objects is just mind blowing. But we're gonna have kind of our first example of how to make use of our clones here to solve a puzzle. And you can see this big stone slab door that's in our way. We need to get past that, so we're gonna pop a clone up here on this pressure pad up ahead. And there you go. And he's gonna stay behind as we go through the vent, he's gonna simply just go away then. So again, here's another example, a little bit more advanced puzzle. We're gonna put him up there, and you can see there's a pressure plate down here once we activate that. Oh, we turned them around the wrong way. That's alright, we'll spawn another one. Do that, and then we're going to jump, he's going to jump, he's going to hit that one, and onward. So it starts off rather simple, and then you can see here we have another example. This is going to make us use all four of our clones. Spawn one up there, spawn one up there, and spawn one up there. And now every time you hold down right mouse button, the game also kind of goes into bullet time, essentially, to allow you to kind of figure out what you're going to do. And later on, it's going to be a very important mechanic, because... You're going to be using clones in ways you never would have thought to platform through this game. Now this is the way most of the story actually gets told. There's also some audio logs that you will hear, but you can go ahead and read these. And it gives this weird sort of Doom feel. If you guys played, uh, you know, Doom 3 specifically, the entire game was really revealed through, through these certain audio logs and these sort of security memos you left behind, you know, slowly revealing what was happening and how the sort of alien, you know, monsters were spawned into the world of Doom. And that's kind of what this feels like. There's lots of notes of the doctor, you know, talking about the uh, the cloning device we have here and how it's not right and things like that. All right, looks like we're going to need to make our way that way, but we're going to head this way, and we're going to pick up our second piece of gear here. So these are basically the two main pieces of gear you pick up in the game. The rest of the, the game is essentially going to change by creating new environmental elements to change the way you have to solve puzzles. So you can see here we've now picked up a swap ability, hence the name the Swapper. And we're going to click and we're going to go through here. Now, funny enough, this game originally was designed as a multiplayer concept. And the idea was that uh, multiple players would be able to swap between each other's minds. And then the game was, you know, later discovered, okay, you know, this will work really well as a single player, you know, concept. We can take this really far. And hence, the swapper was born. So you can see here, here's the sort of natural element that I was speaking about earlier, which is going to change the way we have to play. Clones cannot be created inside a blue light. So what we're going to do is we're going to spawn over here. That's going to deactivate the blue light. Spawn one up here. Come on, there we go. And then we're just going to simply swap to keep our guy back there, and onward. Onward we go. Okay, now we have red light. These block the swapper rays, so we will be able to create a clone like normal, but it will block the swapper rays. So that's not a problem, because we activate that pad, that gets rid of the red rays, and then we simply hop over here. Here's another one of these memory terminals. I'm actually going to read this one, because I think they're interesting. I need a security orb. I have been planet side for weeks. I cannot get clearance back to Thesis. Help me out. I can't. I want to see my husband as much as you do yours. This is the other thing I've seemed to notice as well. Most of the security logs I've read, it seems like there were uh, there's a lot of female scientists on this planet. Okay, there's some more red. We got another council that's actually going to activate that gate. And <laughs> the game is. Uh, okay, you can hear the audio log playing. It's really well done, the audio logs, too. They have that really creepy sci-fi feel to them. This game, I mean, as much as, you know, it's, it seems like just a really simple, you know, sort of 2D platformer here, it does the creepy sci-fi really well. I like that a lot. There's something about it. I get these really strange vibes from the game, especially because you're all alone, this sort of desolate feeling of just being alone on this planet, you know, not knowing, 
you know, am I going to survive? And it just really channels a lot of really good sci-fi stuff, in my opinion. And again, the fact that everything is made out of clay, man, I love it. But you can see here we have a teleporter that is down. This is going to become one of the other main elements you're going to be doing as you're navigating through the levels is finding these encryption orbs to access different teleportation councils and other things. So we're going to continue this way. See if we can get our hands on a on a uh, encryption orb there. Another memory terminal. Thesis quarantine. We need a faster turnaround around, or turnaround down here. The last shift was supposed to go home six hours ago. Instead, you've got them shipping back more rock samples. They're tired. Please advise. Man, it's just such a doom feel about it. I love it. These light beams here as well, these deactivate any clones once you walk through them. So you can see that guy just kind of disappeared at that point. Okay, so here's a good example of, you know, there's the encryption orb. We got lots of reds, red rays here, which are going to cancel us from swapping. So what we're going to do is we're going to spawn a guy right on the edge there. He's going to head over there. We're going to make use of our multiple clones here. We'll spawn over there, swap to him, pop him up there, swap to him, and boom. We got our monogon orb acquired. Now we can bring up the map at any time with Q. This is going to show us the areas that we've navigated previously and you know, it'll give us uh, different areas that we've been to, long distance teleporter and the council. Now it tells us how many orbs we have as well in the top left corner. And I like how this, if you look at the map too, it's kind of like a star constellation outside of the edges here. It kind of shows space. It's just a, uh, yeah, real small details, man. This is a, it's a really well made game. I've actually, I saw this game a while back. Jonathan Blow, the creator of Braid, and you know the forthcoming witness actually demoed this game at a kind of indie indie, indie meet they had that IGN featured, and I've been hooked on playing this game ever since then. I'm really happy I got a chance to do this this preview. All right, let's head back to Space Station Thesis. That's just all gone wrong there. And if you look in the background, this is another one of the things. While it is, you know, the foreground is very well done in clay. You can see the background itself too is very well animated. There's lots of you know. Just detail in the background. We have the departure thing going on back there. You can see sort of in the space, possibly back there. Even welcome to space station thesis. And these are a really cool part of the game. I'm not sure what they are, but these are the rocks that I believe the scientists are studying, as far as I've been able to make out from the notes. And the rocks actually speak to you when you stand next to them. They will tell talk different things. Now we can hold Q here. This is again the new map area. You can navigate the map as well just by moving the cursor around. It works very smooth. Tells us our location. Current location is the hangar, and we have one of those orbs as well. All right, let's make our way through here. <clears throat> now, there's lots of moments like this in the game. I've noticed where you'll be passing under an area that you're going to eventually get to. It sort of like zooms in and lets you see that area and the different things up there. Sector 2 research as we're navigating through the bottom of the map here. Okay, we're going to use E here. E is pretty much the action key as well, as you guys may have seen. That activates all those different memory log stations. And it's also going to allow us to raise this elevator. And then spacebar, which I haven't really mentioned, in fact, jumps. But you guys probably could have figured that out. Let's head down this way. Again, I can't, I can't, uh, I just have to keep pointing out the fact that it's all clay and real life materials. I mean, this is kind of a recent thing. You know, people hand drawing, hand painting, hand painted games. The last two games I actually previewed were hand, hand drawn and a hand painted game. And now we have this sort of claymation game and it just blows my mind. It's, it's so cool to see games being made out of other sorts of media. But here we have the stone is speaking to us again. The limits of our language are not limits of knowledge. Our name was not their knowledge. They thought of us as watchers. So lots of cool, again, really cool, mysterious sci-fi stuff going on. I love it. I am such a junkie for it. Okay, here's an example of another way we're going to be able to interact with the environment by simply grabbing objects. So we're going to hold S here, and we're going to drag this big cube back here that's going to allow us to make it up onto this ledge. Now, of course, things are going to get more complex. Oh. What's going on? I don't know what's going on. Quarantine. Okay, so it looks like we're not going to be able to go that way. We're going to have to find a way to get past this quarantine. We need another encryption orb, en encryption orb to activate this council. So let's make our way through this tunnel over here. But again, it's it's an extremely atmospheric game. I mean, that's even what the developers sort of tag it as is an atmospheric, um, you know, sci-fi, you know, <laughs> fantasy platformer. Not fantasy, sorry. Puzzle platformer. And that's really what it is. But let's pop a guy up there. Come on, buddy. Okay, now how are we going to do this? Funny thing is, I solved this one before, and I just don't quite remember. Okay, we can swap still, right? Yes, we can. There we go. Now we cannot swap, but that's okay, because we're going to walk this guy this way. He's going to jump over there. And then, it, jump, swap it. Yes, we got the Monogon Org. All right. Oh, no, we missed it. I didn't get to read it. All right, we'll skip that one. That's a shame. I really am. I'm kind of absorbed in reading those to figure out what's going on in the story, to be honest. But let's activate this council. That's going to open up the quarantine down here, and we're actually going to head into an area where you guys are going to get to see the sort of thought process you're going to have to use to become a little bit more advanced in terms of using your clones. Initially, when I started playing this game, I wasn't even using all four of the clones, really. You know, I was just doing things kind of in a difficult way, but here's a good example of, okay, this is a really high fall, so what happens if we jump off? 
We broke our little clay legs. <laughs> so we're going to press space. We're going to be able to spawn in right at the door here. Now this is where the, the sort of clone swapping ability is going to come in handy. We're going to start to fall. We're going to hold right mouse button. That's going to go, turn us into slow-mo. We're going to click and then instantly swap. And you can see this guy fell from a height that was non-lethal. And therefore, we survive. So let's head into the gardens and take this sort of concept to the next level. This is going to be a, this is a really cool bit here. Oh, what's going on over there? Hey, look at that. It's another clone. Where's he going? I didn't notice that. I played through this part. I never noticed that. That was creepy. All right, we're into the gardens. We have a couple stones here as well. I'm the only one that believes in the other dimension. I call it space. One moves through space. Yes, how? These stones are really, uh, yeah, profit, profit, profitizing. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. Okay, you can see that arrow pointing up there. Now here is where things are going to get a little bit more advanced. This is, you know, something that I never would have thought I would have been doing when I first started playing this game. But we're gonna shoot a clone up there, quickly swap to him. Shoot another clone, quickly swap to him. Shoot another clone and quickly swapped him. Look at that. We used him to actually go through an area of space where there was just nothing there. It was just space. Let's head on through here. What do we have here? Another example. Okay. Oh, so this thing is starting to close as that is starting to open. So we're going to have to time this just right. We'll shoot a clone oh, through. Nope. Okay. Get another one going up in the air there. Slow down time. Start to fall nice and slow. And there we go. Look at that. Like a pro. Let's shoot one in the air over there. Uh oh. That one's still not open. Alright, let's just keep ourselves in the air here. Maybe not. Let's just let's just head back. What do you guys say to that? Okay, there we go. Now it's going. Teleport our way back that way. So again, just you know, that took me a while to actually figure out that thought process, and the game gets more and more deep, and again we're gonna use oh, this sort of slow mo here to not break our legs. Oh <laughs> two dead clones. It's kind of disturbing almost. Alright, and here's a really good example where it starts to step up. We have these sort of gears over here, which we don't want to walk our guy into. We're going to spawn our clone up there, we're going to walk him off the ledge, and then we're going to have to use this opening here to sort of shoot shoot him with the swapper here. And then again, swap quickly. Oh, okay, we made it. <laughs> it's all good. And we've grabbed the monogon orb, and now we're going to jump our way back up to the top here. No, 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 no. Okay, one way I actually did this is... There we go. We made it. We made it, guys. We were su successful. But that is essentially the core gameplay mechanic of the swapper. And, you know, obviously, the puzzles are going to start to get more difficult. You're going to have to be more creative, creative in the ways you solve the puzzles and the way you use your clones and the different swapping systems to navigate through the level. And that's just a small part of this game. The other part of the swapper to me is the exploration of the levels in this this very atmospheric world that the developers have created. I also, I also want to point out that it was developed by four people. One of them was the, was the same man who, the, the writer for the sort of story and the context for this game is the same guy behind Penumbrum and FTL Faster Than Light. So, I mean, you can expect a sort of top-notch you know, story and experience from this game. And that's all I've discovered as far as I've been playing this game. I've got about two hours into it now. And just everything about it, the world, these, I love reading these, they're just awesome. You see here, just small little details that if you read it, you'll actually, you know, you'll read a log later on and you'll hear somebody talk about it and it just all comes together and it has that very awesome sci-fi feel. This is, this really is sci-fi storytelling at its best. The atmosphere is amazing, the visuals are amazing, and I strongly recommend you guys pick this game up. As I said, it's going to be 25% off for the first week, so you're going to be getting it for a fraction of its full cost over there on Steam. As always, we will have a link in the description below if you guys are interested, and I strongly advise. Please, check out The Swapper. You will not regret it, especially if you're a big fan of sci-fi. Just the story and all the little atmospheric bits and the environments alone are worth checking this game out. But, for more awesome indie games like The Swapper, be sure to subscribe to us here on Pixabyte. Till next time, it's been Tony Mo, and I'll see you guys somewhere in space.